from the makers of Coldwater Omo. John Steed. Ah, Steed. Found you at home. Good. Morning, Mrs. Beale. And what are you up to this bright morning? Learning all about how to sweep chimneys. Useful hobby. My teacher is Bert Smith. He's a member of the British Venusian Society. The, the what? The British Venusian Society. Gosgrove and Hadley were both members. Bert Smith says I've got to join. Members do some sort of nightly watch. Ah. How about the film from Sir Frederick's telescope camera? Been developing them. They are going to make most peculiar prints. The negative looks like a fireball charging in from outer space. Well, can't you enlarge it up and see? Mrs. Peel? Mrs. Peel, what is it? What is it, Mrs. Peel? The Avengers. <laughs> John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. So many women say, once an OMO user, always an OMO user. Because there's just no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water OMO. It solves Mrs. Sutherland's washing problems for her. Very dirty oil or grease moths. Yes. If you use cold water OMO, there's no trouble at all. It comes out very, very easily indeed. There's no washing problem too difficult for cold water OMO. Over one million South African housewives have proved it. Keep your complexion soft and young looking with the creamy, moisturizing lather of Lux. Like Claudia Cardinale, choose Lux. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. <laughs> Episode 2 of this story, in which Emma Peel goes off on a wild goose chase and John Steed gets an offer. From Venus with Love. John Steed and Emma Peel had investigated the curious death of Ernest Cosgrove, a young man who was also interested in astronomy. Cosgrove had been found dead in his observatory, lying under the telescope, with his hair turned snow white. Later, Steed and Mrs. Peel had arrived at the home of Sir Frederick Hadley, just too late to prevent him dying in an identical fashion. The next morning, Mrs. Peel followed up on a clue that led her to Mr. Bertram Fortescue Winthrop Smythe, otherwise known as Bert Smith, chimney sweep. She was telephoning Steed from the hallway of the country house where Bert Smith was working on the chimneys when she heard a strange sound from the other room. Mrs. Peel? Mrs. Peel, what is it? I don't know, Steed. Some sort of terrible noise. Like that outer space stuff we heard. Ah! Hold on. Mrs. Peel threw down the telephone and ran into the room where Bert Smith was sweeping the chimney. He wasn't. He was lying in the open grate among the dust sheets, his brushes and poles scattered over the room. He was dead, all right. And from under the rim of his cloth cap appeared a wisp of white hair. The soot which had fallen from the chimney covered his body like snow. Mrs. Peel gazed down at him in utter bewilderment. Then she heard it, the strange sound that seemed to be coming from the sky outside. Mrs. Peel ran to the window. There, at the entrance to the driveway, was a bright light moving away. Get after it, Mrs. Peel. <laughs> A 
out on the open road, Mrs. Peel was able to put on some speed. There was no traffic about, luckily, and the car responded like a rocket. A bright object ahead seemed partly obscured in the dust. Mrs. Peel swung after it down a lane. A blinding light reflected back onto Mrs. Peel's windscreen. It glared straight into her eyes, dazzling, searing. She couldn't see. It was as though she was driving into an enormous ball of fire. She couldn't control the car. Some minutes later, Mrs. Peel, hands shielding her eyes, crawled out of her car. She gazed across the fields. There, in the next meadow, a man appeared to be on fire. It was a scarecrow ablaze. Of the strange object, there was no sign. In the inner office of the British Venusian Society, a slim, neat young man walked swiftly over to a large modern desk and addressed the person sitting behind it. Venus, the man called Steed, has arrived. Does he look prosperous? Extremely. And show him in, Crawford. Show him in. A few minutes later... This way, Mr. Steed. Oh, thank you. Steed followed the young man and stopped at the desk. He found himself looking at a stunning young woman in her late twenties. She was blonde, but far from dumb. She was engrossed in a mass of documents, adding up columns of figures with the concentration of a high-powered business executive. She looked up and said briskly, I'm Venus Brown, Brown with an E. John Steed, with two E's. I'm the company's secretary. Uh, find a comfortable seat. I've uh, found one. Steed perched himself on the edge of her desk. I gather, Mr. Steed, that you wish to... Apply for membership. Yes, I'm afraid we're a very small select group. Oh, good, I do abhor overcrowding. With stringent rules. Which I shall observe unfailingly. And a very high subscription. The sky's the limit, to coin a phrase. We are not composed of elderly eccentrics, Mr. Steed. Steed eyed Miss Brown's slim figure. I can see that. We choose our membership with great care. Indeed. To begin with, you're a keen astronomer. Dedicated. I cut my teeth on the telescope. Your occupation? Uh, oh, well, I follow in my father's footsteps. He has spent his life depositing money. I spend mine withdrawing it. An enviable pastime. I think perhaps... Uh, you're we'll... familiar with our activities, Mr. Steed. Uh, firstly, we oppose the present space program. I didn't know we had one. But we shall have. We shall. We don't want our efforts to be squandered on the moon. Our target is the planet Venus. There's evidence it could support life. We believe it does support life. For years, we've detected radio signals. They're from Venus? From that direction. Our members are on nightly watch for any signs of life. There's the duty roster. Hmm. Lord Mansford, Sir Frederick Hadley, Bertram Smith, Major Whitehead. Have they spotted anything of late? Flashes of white. Look at this model of Venus, Mr. Steed. Do you see the planet is shrouded in cloud? Distorted, mysterious, remote. Behind those clouds are beings, Mr. Steed. Oh, friendly ones, I hope. Come closer. Who can say? Do you like what you see, Mr. Steed? Oh, very much. Keep your mind on your work, Steed. Uh, is it uh, going to be very expensive for me? Perhaps. Launching any sort of private exploration always is. We can't hope to compete with the major powers. Our aim is a small satellite. We'll still need the know-how. We have it. I was trained at Jodrell Bank. Mr. Crawford here is a radio astronomer, and uh, we've a host of other... Venus is extremely persuasive. God. I mean, good for you. We've acquired the backing of the Cuthbert Foundation. But we shall still have to lean heavily on our members. Oh, splendid. I have very broad shoulders. Uh, want a check now? We'll gladly accept a contribution after your election, Mr. Steed. First, you must have an eye test. Eye test? One false sighting would discredit the society. Well, look here, I, I took a first at Bisley. We uh, make no exceptions, Mr. Steed. I suggest you visit our Dr. Primble at once. Well, if you say so, Miss Brown. Uh, it is Miss Brown, isn't it? Yes, Miss Brown. Oh, well, in that case, uh, yes, yes, to your Dr. Primble at once. While Steed was in 
enjoying his first visit to the offices of the British Venusian Society, Mrs. Peel was having a far less pleasant day. She was walking over the fields, looking for traces of the strange flying object that had nearly wrecked her car. The burning scarecrow had long since burned itself out. A group of farm buildings had now taken her interest. Was it just sunlight that appeared to be reflected back from the windows? Mrs. Peel approached a large barn. Anyone in here? A sudden glare of sunlight shot into her eyes. Ouch! Ooh. Oh, an old cracked mirror nailed to the oak beam. Uh, bales of straw, nothing but straw. That noise yet again. What the devil is it? It's all around me. It's coming. It's coming from above. Outside. No, it, it can't. It's burning. Something burning. The straw, the bales, they're, they're alight. Fire! 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 Mrs. Peel made for the nearest window to raise the alarm. And there, moving down the field away from her, was the same strange space object. Better leave it alone this time, Mrs. Peel. You've got trouble enough. Steed, in his car, tried to raise Mrs. Peel on her car radio. After some time. Steve? Ah, Mrs. Peel, about time. Where have you been? Chasing an unidentified object. Unidentified object? Well, that's vernacular, isn't it? A ball of bright light? A thing? Uh, from outer space? Yeah, from out of barn, actually. Look, you're not trapping me into any sort of opinion about it. It was just, well, very, very strange and like, like nothing I've ever seen before. Hmm. What have you been up to? Ah, well, that'll be telling. Uh, I've been with Venus. Hmm? Venus Brown, with an E. She's the company secretary. She's one of these uh, unique-type Venuses. She's got arms, amongst other things. Is that a fact? What else? Oh, lots. I'm um, working on it. Well, I'll give you another fact, Steve. Our gentleman sweep is dead. Same format. Even the soot turned white. I see. Well, Bert Smith's name was one of the five names on the duty roster at the British Venusian Society. Three of the five are now dead. The other two are Lord Mansford and a Major Whitehead. You'd better get on to him before somebody else does. Try Mansford first. And um, what are you going to be doing, might I ask? Oh, me? Well, I, um, I can't do anything until I've had my eyes tested. Oh, all right. Be good. Oh, I'll be good. Good at what, though? That's the point, isn't it? And with a final heave on the spanner, Ronnie Miller finishes changing his flat tire in just 6 minutes, 32 seconds. Well done, Ronnie. You play any other sports? I wash the car once in a while. You look very fresh, Ronnie. What deodorant do you use? Shield for sportsmen, of course. Why? It works. Shield for sportsmen deodorant won't stick, sting or stain. In aerosol or roll-on. It's made to keep sportsmen cool and dry. Think what it can do for you. No dirt can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. Mrs. Whelan had to wash greasy overalls. And I thought, oh, well, I won't worry. I'll stick it into cold water Omo, and sure enough, every bit of grease is out. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo. The Avengers. Donald Monat as John Steed and Diane Appleby as Emma Peel 
is adapted and directed by Dennis Falvig and produced by David Gooden.